Kalimera, Jesse Olius, or I believe this is the way that you, you say it, everybody. I hope that you're, you're okay, you're good. Let's wake up everybody because uh, we have a lot of nice things to talk about. First of all, I want to say that I think the colleagues in, fr in front of me, which were before me, uh, you know, Lorraine, Micah, and of course, Irene, that they opened up with such strong presentations. And of course, let's not forget Guido there. Uh, but the thing was that they shared a lot of um, statistics, especially Micah, about uh, the European market, etc. So I'll glance through the first few slides of my presentation because I didn't know that we would be sharing so much data. So my data actually starts uh, with, uh, or, or actually my slides start with all of this data that we have. But before I, I begin, actually, I want to say that there's, there's a different shift and there's a different trend when it comes to e-commerce. And it's, bec uh, or actually people's shopping uh, abilities, if you will, or, or vision of, of how the e-commerce and retail will work. And as it can be seen from the US, I don't know, I cannot show anything on the, on the slide anyways, but the idea here is that around 2010, as everybody can see, there's been a definite shift in regards to how um, people's, uh, you know, vision to, to how they work online happens and e-commerce is booming in the US. This is, uh, of course, data from uh, the census of St. Louis. Um, there's also, nothing is, uh, is happening there. Can I please have some, some help? Well, technical difficulties as always. Anyhow, the idea is, as uh, Lorraine said, uh, it's close to five trillion um, uh, dollars, uh, the actual amount of spending worldwide, and it has been, yeah, um, and it has been growing rapidly, especially um, during COVID times, etc. And Micah said a lot of things about the GDP of Europe, etc. I won't go into too much detail, but pretty much nobody said except for Katerina, of course, in the beginning, some data about Greece itself. And here we're in Greece, Kalimera again. Um, and the data that we have as CloudCart, and I'll explain what CloudCart is in just a minute, is that there's a definite interest from the people in Greece in the side of fashion and electronics and uh, you know some uh, home appliances, etc., and so on and so forth. So forth. So above, you can see the icons which are in regards to how people actually, or what merchants are trying to sell on the market itself. And there's a correlation, but it's not pretty much the same as the things that are actually being shopped online by the people. Again, there's a correlation, but not a causation there. And we can see that the fashion industry is about 40% there, but on the bottom, unfortunately, um, you know, I forgot to put the actual numbers there, but these are about 31% here, 24% here, uh, there's about 20% here, and the, the bottom is, is also shifted between the uh, hobbies and, and so on and so forth. The, the actual expenditure of the market itself is between, most of them are between 100 and 500 euro uh, on a single purchase uh, online, of course. And this has been a distribution between all of the separate entities, etc. We, as uh, CloudCard, have a lot of similarity to what uh, Irene uh, said about big commerce. So I'll be reiterating some of the points that you uh, were so kind to point out. Um, and e-commerce consists of two different sections and segments, if you will. One of them being called SM. Uh, one of them being called B2C and the other is being called B2B. Essentially, these two uh, have the same, um, th the same uh, way of dealing with the goods, etc. cetera, um, but they are selling to different audiences, to different people, if you will. And um, in regards to selling, you know, uh, again, I'll be referring to Irene before me, we're seeing a different, definite shift towards a new way of doing business online. And again, my, uh, my, my presentation here is called 
the right way to do business online, basically. And it's, it wants to show you and, and reiterate the idea that moving forward, utilizing stuff like open source, it's, it's nice, it's good, it has a big community there. But the problem with open source is that it needs a lot of support from various people who are not exactly uh, pitching in or basically they're not connected into doing their part. There are different entities and if one of the cogs doesn't work, the whole clock doesn't turn basically. With software as a service, it's a different story for the most part. And as we can see from the left side, that's why it says was, is, and will be, there's a definite shift towards utilizing platforms such as Big Commerce and CloudCard, which are of the type called SaaS, which is software as a service. This is a done-for-you system where you have everything that you need to actually sell online. And you have a lot of support regards all of these types of things. And with open source, you need an agency, we need, you need developers, you need hosting companies, you need a lot of more things which are not bad intrinsically, but they are not as usable by the actual merchants that are trying to sell online, you know? So that being said, what is CloudCard? Finally, on the 10th slide, I'm saying what CloudCard is. CloudCard is actually a software as a service platform that anybody can use. Again, like my previous colleague here, from their first sale to full online scale. So this is what CloudCard is. This is what CloudCard does. It helps online businesses to register and to start their online business, basically. And we, uh, as we're following in the footsteps of big commerce, even you can, uh, Irene, uh, take a shot of this one. Uh, <laughs> we are in third place across the world when it comes to our placement uh, within the SaaS e-commerce industry right after Shopify and big commerce. And we're really proud of this because they're really good players on the market and we believe that together we can make this shift once again from open, open source to SaaS and again, selling international, all these types of things, we'll, we will reiterate those as well. What we have identified thus far is that the merchants, the guys that are trying to sell online, they have the same problems no matter if they're small, medium or big, or enterprise of course, which are of the, of the top end of the customers, most of them don't have the right structures in their business, so they lack the time and knowledge to actually perform all of the e-commerce tasks or the tasks of running their business. The second place, of course, is the money. Everything revolves around money, you know? So that being said, most of the people consider that starting an online business or an e-commerce business is too expensive. It doesn't matter if you're an enterprise, still seeing the hundreds of thousands of euro or a, million, a few millions of euro that you need to set up your ERP system connected with everything else, it costs so much. But it doesn't have to be, you know? And, and last but not least, actually, is the marketing side of things. And thank you again, Irene, for bringing this, this point up uh, on the side of marketing, SEO, and the rest of the things. Because for the most part, if you have a physical business, if you're a retail merchant and you're selling outside on the street, you, you are in Greece, you're in Athens, you're walking around, you're seeing so many small shops selling you stuff. This is not the case online. Nobody just walks by your store. You have to drive the traffic to your store. So in order for this to happen, that's where digital marketing comes in. So what we have built is we have built such a system, such a solution, and this is the first time that I'm going to use the word localization, is a system which is localized market by market with the local players. For instance, in Greece, we are integrated with Scruts, with ACS, with EveryPay, with so many more. With DHL, Google, Facebook, we're one of the few players across the world who are both technical partners to Facebook and technical partner to Google. So you have all that you need in order for you to be actually selling on this market and have all of the automation and optimization that even a small business can utilize that only was reserved only for the highest end of stores or was reserved for the highest end of companies thus far. And of course, we are localized for each and every market where have integration with all of the local players on each and every market 
not just in the region. I'm talking about Romania, Greece, I'm talking about North Macedonia, Serbia, etc., etc. We have the integrations that people utilize. ACS is the biggest here in, in, in Greece. So it's screwed. So if somebody wants to have their online store and at the same time also sell in Scruts, they can use CloudCard and sell from one single place to all of the different points. If they want to sell on Amazon, on eBay, on Etsy, on Facebook, on Instagram, they can utilize CloudCard and do that from one single place. And of course, this is about the software part, but the software is not the end of the story. The story continues or actually begins before the software itself. It begins by having, oh, sorry I have to go like this because I don't have the pointer, but you need accounting in order to open your store. You need legal services. You need translations if you want to do cross-border selling. You need advertising, marketing, design, so many more things. This is something that we call the e-commerce ecosystem of CloudCard. We have experts in each and every country, in each and every of these fields, that are actually being able to be used in order for you to cross, uh, to sell uh, across the border. You are not on your own. You have a help. You have help from the top experts. Anyhow, this is a quick case, case study. I'll browse through really quickly. We have 12% market share in the next country, which is Bulgaria. We entered Bulgaria before we entered Greece, actually. Uh, there are more than 2,000 merchants are already actively using CloudCard with more than 2.5 million customers and customers and more than 4 million orders. We generated last year more than 140 million euro in revenue in total. And this is just from the small country of Bulgaria. Imagine that. And now imagine what you can do in Greece. You can actually do at least three times in, in this amount of revenue because CloudCard enables you to do all of these types of things. And of course, the cross-border selling. I want to reiterate something yet again, Irene was so kind to mention, that you need a lot of things to think about, like a separate entity, a separate company, a separate warehouse, a separate taxation ID, a separate shipping method, a separate payment method. Because for instance, in Bulgaria, one of the most uh, you know, used systems is called MyPos. They're actually in here as well, a financial system for taking payments. But in Greece, it's every pay. In Bulgaria, it's a cont. In Greece, it's ACS in regards to shipping. So in order for you to have successful, full-scale, cross-border selling, you need to be having integrations with all of the local players on each and every market. This is what CloudCard does. We have all of these types of tools about multi-store front, whatever else the, the actual naming convention was uh, before that. And the current technology is what you can see here, each and every user and customer can walk into any shop and purchase stuff. But what we're working towards is a unified interface which is called one-click checkout. Think about this, each and every user Whenever they are registered in one of the stores, they will also and can purchase with one click in any of the other stores of CloudCard. That's the power of CloudCard. A centralized system where all of the merchants benefit from using this system. There's no hassle anymore of users actually purchasing stuff from your stores, guys. And, uh, you know, we have a lot of partnerships where actually, I, I actually forgot to mention, but CloudCard has uh, had a huge investment from the side of Raiffeisen Bank International. We're part of the RBI family. We are partnering with, sorry about that. We're partnering with, with MasterCard on few markets, with DHL, of course, their premium partners, well, with A1, Unicredit, OTP, et cetera. All of these players are actually reselling CloudCard on different markets, Unicredit, OTP, A1, Yetil, etc. Because CloudCard just works and it's from, and it's for starting from the smallest guy with just one product and one person selling these things to hundreds of thousands and millions of products and companies in the top 500. 
Fortune 500. We are technical partners of Facebook, Google, etc. I don't want to bog down into too much detail, but my main point of the presentation is, again, I'm going to reiterate, software as a service, because it's the future, choose the right partner that has the local integrations that you have for each and every market you want to enter. If you want to work in Greece only, work in Greece only. If you want to work internationally, you have to choose the partner upfront in order to make the smart choice and smart investment into moving abroad. And of course, we as CloudCard speak your langu language and thank you very much.